Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 180 of the No Clip Crowcast 180. Do any of you Americans slash Canadians know what that reference is? No. no. Oh, God damn it. Do you ever watch darts? Do you ever watch some, do you ever watch some darts on darts? television? You like people darts? playing it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah like 5 a.m. sometimes when you fall asleep with the TV. Yeah, an accident. On, yeah, yeah. You yeah, wake up with the, you know, half a beer on the table. Oh, it's Someone's so playing darts on the TV. Just a bunch of drunk people singing and chanting and a bunch of drunk people playing a sport. It's just the way it should be. It's like old, <laughs> old school snooker when they were smoking cigarettes in between frames or just during the game, getting ash all over the table. You know, good time old sports. 108. Anyway, whatever. We're here for <laughs> episode 180 of the No Clip Crewcast. Uh, yes, that was Jesse flying a drone in his uh, bedroom, if you're watching <laughs> this on YouTube. Um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. I'm going to sort of preface this. We're going to talk about the Summer Games Festival that happened. It's almost a week ago by the time this podcast goes up, so we're just going to talk about our favorite bits and bobs. Um, we saw I've uh, scabbed a couple of lists from various other video game websites Um uh, to, to talk about some of the highlights. Our own intrepid Frank Howley was, of course, there live, smiling behind Jeff Keighley on the live stream uh, and out there playing a bunch of video games. We were also filming some stuff there, or rather Frank was. Uh, and also, right now, it is Summer Games Festival. Sorry, it is Steam Next Festival. All the festivals are on. Um, and there are just a absolute metric shit ton of video game demos out there. We're going to talk about a bunch of them, but we are actually, Jesse is producing a dedicated video where myself, him, and Jeremy are going to talk about some of our uh, highlights that we've played. So we're going to be a little bit restrictive. We're not going to overly speak about that. Um, we'll have a separate video out on No Clip Crew uh, at some stage. I'm not going to say later this week. I don't know how busy Jesse is. At some stage in the future. Uh, with uh, with our thoughts on some of those demos, as uh, so you can go and wish list those games. Uh, Jesse, when is Summer Games Fest ending? Do you know when some? I know the demos are always like they just leave them up a lot of the time. There's no like hard. The fucking festival has closed. Pick up your beer cans and go home. But do you have any idea when they're start? Is it just a week? I always forget. Yeah, Summer Games Fest never ends. By the way, it's it's continued to going. It'll go forever. But Steam Next Fest ends on the seventeenth. Uh, so it should be over on the following Monday. Uh, so when you listen to this on the Friday, it'll be done on the Monday. Okay. Uh, cool. But yeah, like you said, a lot of those demos will stay up, which is, you know, if you're an indie developer, I feel like you're, it's in your best interest to leave them up because everyone's articles are coming out on the Friday or, you know, over the weekend. So people won't be able to play them if they go away by the Monday, right? I mean, yeah. not a lot of free time. There's so many of them, like you said. So. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. It's, uh, it's different to play them than it is to to just hammer that wish list button. I feel like it's like a different muscle. I feel like a demo you've played that you've enjoyed and wish listed, you're almost certainly going to buy or at least oh, yeah. like, really consider it. Absolutely. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the previous festival though, Keeley Fest, Key 3 2024. Uh, put your keys in the bowl, see which video game <laughs> you end up sleeping with. Frank Howley, you had an orgy of video game experiences this past weekend. Uh, how was it? How was the whole thing? You represented Noclip. People were coming up and saying, hey, it's Frank Howley from Noclip. <laughs> or probably people were also saying, hey, it's Frank Howley from Mega64. Hey, it's Frank Howley, the guy who was trying to free Stellar Blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, one of my favorite interactions is I was sitting down at the Devolver, like, digital, like, area. They had, like, every booth basically had its own bar also. But mm. so D Devolver Digital had its own area. And I was sitting down and some an Australian person came up to me and was like, asked like if I was Frank he recognized me because he watches the no clip podcast but he recognized the stardom hat oh, <laughs> like terrific. oh yeah so there you I'm go so, they're from Melbourne I forget your name but th thank you uh they're they're very awesome uh summer games fest is amazing and I I interviewed Jason Schreier I'm making a little video of it and Jason Schreier said it perfectly like the actual big Keeley stream that Jeff Keeley put on like it was well produced it was cool but it's it's whatever all right cool the actual play days experience is so amazing but it's not it's it's weird to use the term exclusive, but it's like it's not as open as it was E3. Like I snuck into E3 every year. It's very easy. <laughs> right. The Keeley's thing is very like there's a lot of security, so you know, uh, like it's it's. But we're there officially. It was also very flattering to like have the No Clip podcast on the the badge and everything. But uh, it was really really cool. Yeah. So it was three days. I was just there for two days. But I basically got to play everything I wanted to. Um, Danny how, gave me very yeah. How, how big was it? So I know I went a little. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't go last year. I went the previous year. So I'm wondering if it, if it got a little bit bigger. But I'm guessing it's like not that big. Like maybe 
200, 300 people, something like that. How many how many booths were there? Like, would, yeah, did it take you two days to get around to everything? No, I feel I feel like I got to see most of what I wanted the first day, and then the second day was just like extra, or, or just seeing if there's extra appointments. Like, man, it feels like maybe a quarter of the size of like what PAX West is like. You know, okay. like it, it's so it's so it's apparently it is getting a little bit bigger, but like Sounds bigger. there was. Yeah, there was like one big hall that had a bunch of like little indie pop up booths, and then every company basically had its own kind of building or space. Also, like Sega just had one giant tent that had a bunch of games in it. Like Sony had its own section and things like that. But like, yeah, you could basically everything was blocked out by appointments, mm. but it was very easy. But with the fun of it, the thing I liked is like everyone was just walking to and from the appointments, so you could just stay in that main alley and just see everybody. So I got to go up to see like I talked to Dan Reichert, Jason Schreier, a bunch of other like. Like Maximilian dude was there oh, running cool. around yeah. and stuff like so you just gotta see everyone and it was like this is very cool but also it's like there aren't tons of people going up and bothering and people people are just you know doing their thing um, but yeah I I loved it should, should I talk about some of the games I played I know we're gonna go yeah. In. yeah do you know your embargoes is it all out yes. of embargo so, so yeah. we are we are we are clear of everything this will also go up the Friday <laughs> yes but the th- the number the number one thing of the show that this was presented on stage also that I really liked well I will say on. In terms of the press conference itself, Killer Bean looks incredible. I know. <laughs> I, I, like, that was not playable at the show. Killer Bean. Oh, my God. Killer Bean's coming out early. Can we access. talk about Killer Bean for <laughs> yeah. a second? Yeah, yeah. Because I swear to God, this thing, I f- it lives in the same part of my brain as, like, the crazy frog or something, where I was like, <laughs> yes. when this trailer came up, I was watching whatever stream I was watching, I forget who it was. And there was a lot of people in in that chat and in the Noclip Discord saying, how the fuck do I remember this thing? Like, what is this? This is like a nightmare from a previous internet or something. So it was, was Killer, it was Killer Bee was like a bunch of like early YouTube animations, wasn't it? Yeah, so apparently what it was, it was just, it, it feels like it's like the room of the animation world. Like, there's a Killer Bean movie on YouTube. It, it seems like it was just one person who spent their life <laughs> savings yeah. and just self-produced this insane Killer Bean thing. But it just turned into a meme in itself. And now this video game seems very self-aware. But I've not seen any of the original shorts. But that's why I was generally blown okay. away when this was on screen. I was like, wait, what? Do, Jesse and Jeremy, do you remember this at all? Or- no, in fact, I have a confession to make. When this trailer came on, I thought this was a game about the McDonald's Chicken McNuggets. <laughs> that- Holy shit. Yeah, it does kind of look do like Do you remember that. in like the late 90s, they had yeah. like these Halloween toys? Oh, yeah. The, the McNuggets, and they, they had these like plastic slide-on costumes, and you turn them into like Frankenstein Dracula. I thought this was a McDonald's game for like <laughs> basically the entire trailer. Outstanding. I only remember it as like a, like I have a vivid memory of like, of this wearing a leather like matrix suit and doing slow mo flips while shooting a gun like that's yeah, yeah. that's what, that rings a bell yeah <laughs> and they're making a game so I'm glad Frank is, is we're starting the show with the real heavy hitter here yeah so so Killer Bean was was amazing did you play um, it. No, it wasn't that on wasn't the show, anything. unfortunately, but apparently it's early access in the summer. But stuff that was shown and playable was I got to play Metaphor. I have to pull up the full title. Metaphor is- Refantasio. Re-fantasio. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm so excited for that game. I want to hear about it. <laughs> Metaphor refantasio. So yeah, dude. It, it, it's like, yeah, it's like you're Italian, Jared Leto yeah. in 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 the fucking yeah. what, what movie is that? Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A boof. A boof. Yeah. Re, re, refantasio. So this was really cool because Jeff Keighley's like, and here we are, the, the you know the art directors and of Persona team, they, and they came out and uh, yeah, this is the new game from the Persona team. They've been working on this since they shipped Persona Five like eight years ago. Whoa. Um, and so this is basically a medieval fantasy Persona. Um, all of the character designs are gorgeous. There is a cute redhead elf. Uh, there, there is a there's a fairy. There's lots of great stuff. Um, um, yeah, it, it, but it's the same flow as Persona. There's even like an in-game calendar system, but it's all whatever the medieval fantasy term is for Sunday or whatever, like <laughs> Lufton Day, whatever. But yeah, you, you're fuck you, you you're, Gregorian <laughs> calendar. Take yeah. that, you going Catholic back. sons of bitches. <laughs> uh, so it's just medieval persona. You're going through, going through dungeons. What's cool is in persona, you have your personas, those like little demons or fairies or freaks that you, you call into battle. In this one, you, you Are they have, called metaphors? I, 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 it might be. It might be. I forget the term for, the term for it. Great. It, it, um, but you have, but they're like basically different job classes. And I think each... I think there's 20 different job classes and you can pair with each character. So you can have like, you know, like a knight, healer, paladin, all these things. So it seems like there's so much to grind, which I like. <laughs> um, and then same thing, like similar to in like Persona 3, you go back to your like, 
your 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 board house every day to, to to have dinner with friends or whatever. You go back to your ship and you can cook with them oh, or cool. do things like that. So it's got the relationship stuff and all of that in here. Uh, I got to play like a full hour of it. There was like opening oh, story wow. stuff. Yeah, that there was a hands-on hour-long demo. There was opening story stuff. There was like combat dungeon exploration and a boss battle. And I felt very like happy that I beat the boss because um, it plays the exact same as Persona. You figure out there's the the, the weaknesses the, and things like that. Um, what I loved, same composer, so- Shoji Magir- Maguro. So just just everything, the, the the style, the colors, everything of this game hits. So now I'm like, I need to finish Persona 3 before this comes out, October 11th. But Metaphor, Refantasio, just playing it, it's like, yep, this is the newest game from the Persona team. It's incredible. Hell and yeah. uh, everything looks good. So I really like that. What showcase awesome. was this shown on? Was this shown at Summer it, Games? It, yeah. On, on okay. Ke- on, on Keeley's show, they came out with the, the Persona team, came out, they showed a trailer. They, and then Atlas had like an extra trailer premiere stream event. And I think this was also teased earlier at some other press conference okay. thing. Because so. that, that, show, yeah. that showcase was long. It was. There were yeah, was was three hours? Oh, my God. God, it kept going. I was like, I need yeah. to go to NASCAR. It was on Friday. I was like, the last thing I was going to watch before we we took the RV out, and it was just, I was really impressed. I actually like, you know, fair play. I think there was that report that came out earlier in the week that was talking about the the costings on Summer Games Fest. I think, you know, none of that was a surprise to me. I've heard a lot of the numbers bounced around for that mm. and for um for the game awards and stuff like that. I think a lot of that is just, I think if people knew how much video game marketing costs, they'd maybe they, people know a little bit more now. It is shocking. I think when you first learn about all that sort of stuff and just marketing in yeah. general, not just video game marketing, it's just, it's a really big industry and it, it clearly works because we're all just lizard brain dum dums. But, um, <laughs> uh, it's still, I think it was cool that like there was a lot of, do you see that little game with all the little Scottish lads? I was like, how the fuck? Yeah. Like, they that didn't pay cool. fucking two hundred fifty thousand dollars for their thirty seconds. That was like pretty. That was my favorite joke to make while watching the summer game fest. <laughs> was right. like if, if you saw something that you were like you weren't really interested in, you're like, wow, man, they just spent four hundred thousand dollars for that. <laughs> and you can <laughs> tell which ones like, are the ad blocks, though. Yeah, right? of course. Like, yeah, yeah, you can see which ones. Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Although some of them had presentations that were probably ones that were paid for. Like, like I imagine that metaphor re Fantasio one was probably something Sega paid for it because like they had yeah. the interview out there. They did the, you know, it was a long whole thing. Um, it was interesting as well, not to get off topic a little bit from no clip, but um, the secret tape project that we put out a couple of months ago for that uncapped game RTS um, was shown. They had like that anime trailer uh, and they yep. showed the game as well. And they gave it a name, which is great because mm-hmm. I went through that whole project, not knowing what the fuck that game was called and not being able to show gameplay. So it was a, uh, it was interesting to see all that could, stuff. Could you there. remind me of the name? I know it has Ace Battle in it. Aces. Battle Aces. Thank you. I kept. I was Googling Combat Aces, and Battle I knew that wasn't right. Aces. Ace Combat. They should have called Ace it. No. Um, Battle Ace. Hmm. I've, the battle is like a battle net thing. I can kind of get the vibe on. You know, it's like yeah. a, it's because it's it, they're attempting to go for the the StarCraft two, although it's very much like you know, I, as we covered in that doc, and as they clearly were showing on the thing, they are they are trying very hard to not piss off rts fans by going you can auto build here or like we're doing it for a reason seems to be like the the predominant thing that they don't they're like yo yo yo, we're not we're not making rts games casual this is why we're doing it but you know the jury will be out until people actually get to to play that game um i would just got a kick out of seeing that because i was like sometimes i forget that and the fact that like just all the time there are people up there who we've either covered in a documentary, interviewed on a podcast, or, you know, is a game sequel that's something that we've done before, which um, is always... Uh, we should cool. do like a little... We should Next year we should do like a no-clip bingo card or something for like... That's a great idea. You know, <laughs> that is a good idea, shit. yeah. Um, J- Jesse, just, you know, we'll get back to Frank and, and, his, and his wonderful weekend, but was, was there any stuff in the showcase that stood out to you, Jesse? Was there any games, either that oh, or yeah. Microsoft I mean, was, or anything over the weekend? There was that- tons of stuff. I, I tried to watch as much of the streams as I could while I was doing some work on the side, so I'd have it on the other monitor. It was perfect for that. Uh, the thing that I keep coming back to the most from the whole showcase, all of the showcases, is, what was it called? 33, not Immortals, that's a different game. Expedition 33? Okay. This game... Man, yeah, Claire Obscure Expedition 33. It's from a team called Sandfall Interactive. It's headed up by some people who worked on uh, some Ubisoft games. And, oh, yes. Uh, and it's yes. got a bunch of like first timers or people who have worked on like smaller things, a lot of mobile stuff. And this is really funny. It was, it was insane you're talking to see. Ab- 
I, I there are a lot of games that got announced in this thing that I've known about for a while or have had NDAs or friend DAs about. And when you start yeah. talking about this, I was like freaked out for a second. Okay, so yes, they showed this thing. It looks pretty cool, right? Yeah. Oh, you already knew about this? Uh, maybe. Okay. I can't possibly tell, but yeah. Right. Well, you kind of just gave it away. Uh, so, it, it, yeah, this looked really cool. When they started showing it off at first, it was like France, but fucked up. And like the <laughs> kind of the most generic character designs I've ever seen. Like to start when they come out, it's like guy with brown hair, woman with brown hair. They're wearing clothes and they're black. Uh, like it's chill. It was fun to see. And then it cuts to like this turn based action RPG kind of thing. And I was like, baby, give me this right now. The music starts playing. It's really exciting. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I need to know more about this. The story seems weird. I love the designs of everything. And uh, they have on their website, they have a list of like all of the game developers and um, the games that inspire them. And most of them are Mm. like Final Fantasy VIII, Nier Automata, Final Fantasy XIV. I'm like, okay, these are my people. These are my people. I need to play this game. How how long is it going to take? Give it to me right now. That was definitely the standout one for me. Yeah, it looks pretty gorgeous. I really like the art style. It's like it's the Belle Epoque yeah. thing they're going for. It's that like sort of classical French beautiful era, um, which you know is very much like a. It, it reminded me a bit of the whole. Uh, what was the what's the game I love that's set the all the Spanish influence art the the. the metroidvania oh, fucking blasphemous too oh, blasphemous. blasphemous yeah blasphemous yeah. was like cool we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk about a bit of like artistic history that only exists in spain and similar with this they're like we're leading really hard into belle epoque and this is like a you know a, a, an era of of french creativity and and art that kind of kind of hasn't like it gets rolled into like other things like uh like um the bioshock stuff like you know uh What's that, Eric? I just can't think of fucking things today. Just my vocabulary. <laughs> like Art Deco? Art Deco. Art Deco. Yeah, because Art Deco yeah. was like throwback to some of that stuff, but this is obviously the sort of the original era of some of this. Um, so yeah, that that one, yeah, that looked pretty cool too. And Anything else, Jesse? Any other ones? Stood oh, out? That's man. A great show. I, dude, everything in the Xbox showcase. I don't think mm. they ever showed one bad thing. South of Midnight is definitely one that I was oh, like, yes. this is so cool. As soon as she started grapple hooking around, I was like, the combat, I was like, whatever, I don't really need that. But like, as soon as she started getting around the world and the sort of like stop motion animation to that character, the environment, it's cool to see a game that takes place in Louisiana that's also, or well, the South, uh, that's also doing like a, like a fantasy, fantasy angle on yeah. it. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like they do that quite often actually with the with the setting, but it's cool to see it in a triple A game. It's usually stuff like Weird West or or like more obscure, smaller things. Yeah. So to see that at a higher budget is really great. Or, or like, I, I wonder, because I'm not from the South and I'm going to go there for the first time this summer to do some filming, but uh, I feel like that's a, I don't know, maybe it is a trope. I'm not sure. Maybe people in South probably have something to say about this, but I know in like literature and then in film, you get a lot of like big fish and like movies like that. Yeah. Right? where it's like yeah you get that because there is that like southern mysticism or you know know, i feel like creole culture and a lot of that stuff is a you know it's just fucking swamps are weird man right so swamps are weird yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah i thought that was cool too i was like oh that's you know that's interesting that's a fresh Mm -hmm. weird place i've never been in a video game um what did you make of the rest of the microsoft one because there was a lot of sequels there was a lot of like there was in a weird way the microsoft one felt like a microsoft conference from like 10 years ago which i think some people really liked i was a little bit worried i was like isn't the whole problem that like not enough young people are playing games and like triple (laughs) a stuff is like struggling under the the weight of old people um yeah like uh, we're, we're just gonna go do a gears of war prequel we're gonna you know Perfect it's dark. A, yeah, it's a weird poll. It's like perfect dark, especially is the one where I'm like, I can't believe they're they're putting so much effort into that one. Like that looked better than I thought it was going to look. Good demo. It sounded yeah. like it was in development hell and it kind of looks a lot better than people were making it out to seem. I feel like we we tend to over assume things are going poorly because they're taking a long time anyway. That that seems like a wrong way to look at things. Um especially with one, the development it, cycles now. And, but, and it was like, one of those demos that I was kind of squinting a little bit, going like, how much of you is real yeah you yeah know, yeah little, that had big yeah. assassin's creed 3 vibes where i was like this kind of <laughs> looks like we pre-rendered a lot of this but also games just look like that now so who mm. knows yeah i think overall the xbox showcase the part of it that was fun is that like this kind of feels like and i feel like we say this every year but it feels like this is the culmination of all the stuff they bought 10 years ago like it's exciting right because you see like finally xbox's stuff is paying off but also I I couldn't leave the showcase without feeling like, man, we just kind of went through a pretty bad patch with you guys. You just closed some studios that did some successful stuff. So part of me is excited because I see these fantastic looking games from these teams that are really passionate and are probably very happy to have their projects finally out there for people to see. And then another part of me is like, 
fuck. I really hope I, I, them even doing well doesn't seem to matter. So I, it's hard to be, mm. you know, just passively excited about this shit. It's 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 a little I'm I'm torn on it. Yeah, I'm with you. It felt a little bit, yeah, sort of. I don't know. There was like a splinter in my in my side when I was yeah. thinking about the whole thing. Every um, cool new release, you see the Grim Reaper on their shoulder. Like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Sorry, I've, I have a little list here of the Microsoft ones because it's a little bit easier to manage than the um, than the other ones. Before that, though, Jeremy, w- did you catch any of that one? I'm guessing, like, of all the conferences that you were likely to focus on, the Microsoft one was probably the least likely of of the bunch. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I kind of watched like a little bit of it. Um, I don't know. I the the problem with the Microsoft trailers is kind of like representative of a larger reason that I tune out, which is like, I feel like trailers at summer game fest fall into two categories, which is they're either big bombastic cinematic trailers that I don't care about because they're cinematic trailers or they're really cool trailers for games I care about. And I don't want to watch because I want to (laughs) preserve myself. Those, those are the two camps of trailers I don't want to watch. And I feel like covers most of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know when I hear about a, a new fable game, I get excited, but then it's like, yeah, I don't know. I I'm, I have a weird relationship with these shows where it's like I kind of just associate them with working at E3 and I, I sit down on my own time to, <laughs> to sit down and watch trailers. And I'm like, I don't, there's none of the like Games people around PTSD. me where I'm like, oh, man, like, look at this. This is cool. I'm just like alone. And I'm like, I feel like I'm just like, you're right. I doing miss unpaid that. labor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's like a there's like a fun sense of community. I mean, I guess like the no clip discord has a little bit of right. that. Um, yeah. It was nice to kind of watch people, you know, get buzzed about some things and poke a little fun at other things. But uh, (laughs) yeah, Microsoft was definitely lower on the uh on the list of, of things that got me excited yeah uh, let, let me go through some of them they showed up call of duty 6 which um uh, black ops 6 which first of all i think it's very funny that it's called black ops 6 i'm glad they've stopped with this whole fake fucking they didn't just go black ops 1 again and just reset it and <laughs> um, also the fact that the trailer started with uh, Firestarter. Which um, so does our wipeout doc? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Which, funny. Which, which may be the reason why I've not been getting copyright strikes because whenever that happens, whenever a big trailer's <laughs> coming out, they're usually like sort of pre because all Gamespot and like IG and all these people oh, will yeah, be posting point. the trailer, so they usually drop the sort of sensitivity on it. So I'm wondering if that would maybe help us out. Um, let's talk about our our good friends. Uh, the the latest the latest from Hugo Martin and and buddies. Uh, Doom, yeah. the Dark Ages. Is this just Quake? Is it- <laughs> yep, it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I got look. I'm, I'm, that's the the fun, funny joke to make. Is they're making a prequel Doom game, and it does have a lot of the aesthetic of a Quake game. But look, Quake games don't play like Doom games, so I I totally appreciate it. What, what did you guys make of uh, Doom, the Dark Ages? Dude, chains chainsaw shield, brother. Come on. Do we need anything else? You throw it like Captain America and it comes back to you? That's sick? Like, that's peak. I don't know. I, I really like Doom Eternal. Uh, I know that it got a lot of backlash for uh, certain gameplay mechanics being a little too challenging. Uh, you know, uh, I, I see skill issue to that personally. Uh, mm. But it was, you know, I enjoy, get, I'm excited to see what they do with this new one. Yeah, get good. Honestly, that's that sounds like a you problem. Uh, it, it, I'm excited to see what they do with this new one. I think that it's funny. The trailer for that didn't have me as excited as the concepts for it. Like the footage mm. of it looked kind of too slow. Like whoever was playing was very deliberately trying to show off the gameplay mechanics. So it's, it's just like, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a Is fucking that actually deep the cut person? for people. What is no, that? do you remember the old it wasn't even him. That's that's a you know, I'm sure if Arthur was listening to this, that's that was a, a joke made in good faith. But do you remember the um the polygon uh, footage from Doom in 2016. Do you remember? There was like, oh no, was that him? Polygon got shot on because there was a gameplay demo or clip. Oh, from the uploaded. beginning where he couldn't Doom aim at any of the thi- yeah, 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 and it was just like whoever was playing was just it was very slow. It was like in the same way that like whenever we capture gameplay, we are very Frank knows this more than anyone. We are overly sensitive to how critical gamers are of gameplay. So if you if you look like a fucking noob in the documentary on the game, it looks bad. Um, yeah, so that, that's all that was. Um, but yeah, to, to, you make a good point about like, I wonder, is this a bit of a cor- course correction from Eternal? Because, you know, Hugo talked about how frustrated he was watching people play Doom 2016 and just using one gun the whole time. Um, yeah. And Doom Eternal was a game that really forced you not to. And I think a lot of people 
didn't have a good time because they just wanted to run through that game with one gun. And and in this one, I think I read somewhere that they were talking to someone at in, maybe it was Hugo, and they talked about how they want every gun in this game to to feel like you can you can take people on with it. So um cool. yeah, I wonder what the what that'll be like. Um State of the K three was shown. Feels like one of those games that you just yeah, yeah. we're gonna get another state. I, I've been mean I've been wanting to play State of Decay two with my wife co op, but it's kind of awkward to do it. So hopefully they'll fix that up on three. Uh, Dragon Age, the Veil Guards, they've renamed this one. Any Dragon Age fans care about this? Man, Not I me. wish. All right, let's keep <laughs> moving. I'm more excited about Avowed, personally, actually. So Yeah, yeah. It, they made it look a lot better the second time around. Um, The new Avowed trailer, you mean? Yes, yeah, the new Avowed yeah. trailer. Because the first one that they showed in January or whatever was like... Eh, I think it was think actually, it oh, so uh, me and Jeremy's experience, well, I don't want to speak for you, Jeremy. My experience of it was the first time they showed a vet, which was last year, it didn't right. look great, but the trailer they did at the Xbox showcase in January was actually really good. Oh. And and this one okay. is too. So I don't, I, I, I don't know if, um, I like the gameplay thing they did. And that, that seemed to be, and they also, they had that really good key art that they're now showing That was the, the highlight. They, they're selling <laughs> merch with that on it. They know what they're doing. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Seth of Midnight, which you mentioned. Uh, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. It looked interesting. Character action it's, game. You got a little fox it's good. or something. There's a demo on, on Next Fest. It's, it's, oh. I was, it's, you know what? I was telling my buddy when I was streaming it to him, that is the most, and this is 100% not an insult, the most seven and a half out of 10 game I've ever played. <laughs> it is like hey, perfectly Nicky Jakey likes designed. Him. Dude, it's, Nakey Jakey knows what's up, baby. It's that game. Mwah, beautiful. Well done. If they're, if they see this, you guys are, you're killing it. Keep going. Beautiful. Their previous game, Ashen, was awesome too. So this is cool to see them do a follow up. Uh, Age of Mythology retold. I'm pretty sure this was announced before. If it wasn't, I think we heavily implied that this might be a thing they work on in our Age of Empires we knew docu- about it. documentary. Yeah, we knew about it. <laughs> I forget. Um, so they showed that off. Uh, Perfect Dark, which you also mentioned. Fable. Uh, Frag Punk. This is an interesting one because this one looked interesting to me. And then some there was a Reddit thread where they were talking about a game that came out four or five years ago that basically had the same mechanics. Um which was a first-person arena shooter where you use cards to like almost make mutators in during the game. Like, yo, oh, you can one. make you can make the grass tall. I think I'm thinking about the right one here. Um, but then, so, <laughs> whoa, yeah. put that. Holy that's a box shit. quote. It's like head mode. they list off the like three of the example the powers. It's tall. like big head yeah. mode. Make yeah. the grass tall. 5v5 <laughs> rule changing hero shooter is what they've called it. Um, I cool. forget the name of the other game that, that had the cards, so I, I feel bad even bringing it up. Um, mixtape. Anyone see this? Looks great. Yeah, yeah. that's from uh, Horse Something. I can't remember the name of horse the developer. Horse Something. Uh, sorry, but yeah, it uh, that looked really cool. That's that's made by the same people who did a, a Strange Something. Let me, let me get it because I'm going to be, oh, I'm gonna a be strange upset, horse. I think. Yes, it was Beethoven and Dinosaur was the name of the developer. Sorry, they made okay. the Artful Escape, which I played a couple of years ago. Oh, that yeah. was really cool. So okay. I'm excited to see them making a new thing too. Stylish. Uh, Life is Strange mm-hmm. Double Exposure. Yep. Microsoft Place Flight Max. Sim 2024. Uh, they showed off Indiana Jones in the Great Circle, which looks a <laughs> lot more like Indiana Jones than I was expecting. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> That guy sold me. I was already excited. That guy was like, okay, they get it. They know what they're doing. That was they some, make the most was punchable Nazis. Machine games yeah. know how to do it. They're so good. If they're not, they don't have a, a, a crazy fascist being mean to her, their overweight daughter, then they have Choo Choo guy. You know, either <laughs> they just know, they know, those Swedes know how to set that shit up real good. I've been calling him Choo Choo Charles for the last two days. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's good. Speaking of Choo Choo Charles, did you see yes. uh, Gavin Eisenbeiss's new game got announced at the Game Awards? Which what was, was it called? Chud, Chud Muffin or something? <laughs> or cuff, yeah, it has a Was very... it Cuff Punks or something like that? Do you remember bust? this, Frank? Did you see that? Cuff bust. Yeah. Oh, that's what it, was. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people in the audience watching it were like fairly ecstatic about it and laughing along to it. Too. Oh, cool. Um, it was funny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they had the basic thing in the security feed. It was like 420, 2069 or whatever, like little, okay. little micro gags like that, too. Um, they, they also kind of look like, yeah, the Rabbids from Ubisoft. But. <laughs> Did a little bit, yeah. yeah. It's like a four. Is it a co op? shootery thing something i can't i'm not quite yeah sure. it's like a co-op well, prison escape, escape kind of like okay. sandboxy co-op it also like as this speaks to what i was saying when we were talking about lethal company and stuff is like gavin is a, a younger dev i feel like the younger generation of devs really understand like weird novel multiplayer experiences yeah. and uh i think we're gonna i think this is like an emerging 
you know, genre. I don't know if Gavin played like, I can't remember his background if he played like Roblox and stuff, but I know he's been into right. dev from a, a young age. So I feel like there's just, you know, there's a mentality about like weird, just like, what if we like, what if me and my buddies escaped prison instead of just like <laughs> my generation were like, yeah, you just like shoot shit, just like out and shoot shit. It's interesting thinking about development from the perspective of younger people, because like video games for people even around my age or even younger aren't exclusively experienced through play. It's also through watching streamers and watching live right, streams. Yeah. So like this yeah. part of the gameplay is like not so much that they've played the games themselves, but that they've watched streamers play these games and they're trying to emulate that experience for the player, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like the games that are streamable are almost like um, they're suitable to having like a performance in in the playing of it, which is something yeah. that is not necessarily it's not exclusive to streaming. And I also think when you and your three buddies play a four player co-op game, if there's like a crazy moment that happens or whatever, part of the fun is kind of like hamming it up and being like, holy shit, yeah, holy exactly. shit. You know what I mean? Like getting really into it and not like improv, but just like a little bit. Know, yeah, yeah, like a little, it, totally it, right. like it verges on like um like role playing almost, where it's like mm -hmm. you're not you're not like talking in an accent and doing a character voice, but you're kind of like putting yourself more emotionally in the experience or something and acting it out. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I was happy to see that as well because my my feeling when I met him as well was that he's like geographically fairly isolated, and then sort of design wise, the guy is self taught, right? So I. It was cool to see him and pictures of him, and I was cool. Was, I really liked seeing like folks like Nakey Jakey hanging around as well, because he'd never—I don't think he'd ever been to any of these things before. So it was cool to see sort of um, different folks. Uh, I don't know, like the thing that I really enjoyed about E3 back in the day, and Frank was sort of alluding to it a little bit as well, is having a sense of community around this stuff with developers, with other people in the press, with influencers, whatever it is. You know, we're largely isolated people in this industry more now more than ever. You know, back then we worked on Second Street. Hey, look, IGM was just down the road. We had a whole office full of people, as Jeremy was saying, watching the E3 uh, conferences live together and, and enjoying them as, as a sort of a, you know, work a working uh, organization or, you know, a bunch of friends. But, uh, um, yeah, I thought it was really cool as well to see him uh, down there. And uh, did he get interviewed by Keeley or they showed him or something? I thought something like that. Anyway, go check out our documentary on Choo Choo Charles, motherfuckers. Uh, Gears of War E-Day. E-Day. Mm. What's E-Day The, e the do-rag fell off. He put it back on. Mad oh, World ha. played. The whole, it, they, they did it all. He didn't say on you once, but... Um, they're 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 doing it. They're doing it. They're doing the emergence day. I hope Dom and fucking hope Marcus make back. it through. Yeah, yeah. Hope they hope they survive and make it to the start of Gears <laughs> yeah, of they, War. Are one. they going to make it? That's <laughs> a good point. Good so point. much dramatic <laughs> tension. <laughs> it's weird, man. I guess. Look, nobody ever look. They made some good Gears of War sequels, but yeah. those games were so about those early characters and that early vibe. And I get it that they're going back, but also. I don't know. I don't know. Are you guys I feel excited? like the moment has passed. I, I don't know. Gears of War was like, it was so iconic. And it's it's one of those games that kind of came around the same wave of like Resident Evil 4, where everyone was like, oh shit, third person shooters are like fun and cool. And like, you know, Gears of War, you know, no no shade to Operation Winback, but uh, Gears of War <laughs> put cover shooters on the map. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like the, the moment has passed. It kind of feels like to me... Um, like the later Indiana Jones movies or something where they're like, they're in, it's yeah. remember Indiana Jones. And it's like, I remember Indiana Jones. I'm not going to go watch this fucking Shia LaBeouf movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, you could argue that like, you know, those, uh, I, I don't know enough about the Gears of War community. I know when I played those Same. games and Same. it probably ties up very closely to when I was in high school and when I was in college and then when I wasn't. Um, but those early games were made by Epic and then the coalition took over. And I don't know if there's a delineation that exists there, but it very much does feel like those early games from Epic were breaking new ground and doing that thing. And then the 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 sequels afterwards, as many fourth and I mean, in fairness, the Unreal Tournament games kind of felt a little bit that way as well. When when you know Unreal Tournament three especially feels like a proto Gears game, but you know they got a little bit blasé. That's the nature of sequels, I guess. But um, yeah, I I don't know. The beating heart isn't there for it for me anymore. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there are people who, you know, are excited about this and are yeah. Gears fans and whatever. But um, yeah, it's just it's I I whenever I hear people talk about Gears of War in modern times, they're or in contemporary times. They're like, oh, yeah, this was like that one was like surprisingly good or like I really enjoyed that. But it's very rarely the way people talked about Gears of War when it was a new thing. And it was like, wow, this is like a very different novel experience that I haven't had in other games. It kind of just feels like they're like 
doing doing more of them. Yeah, like I went, walked up behind that motherfucker with active reload and a shotgun, and I blew them into a powdered dust. Like, just, yeah. hey, if they nail the online and I get back in and play like 20 days of Gears of War online again before everyone gets good, um, I'll have a fun time. That'll be good. Uh, a couple <laughs> of other quick hits here. Then we'll play the Alan 2, Alan Wake 2, Alan 2, the Alan Wake 2 <laughs> Night Springs DLC stuff. They made a sequel to that guy? They put out another Alan? Alan, yeah. Alan 2. <laughs> No, I haven't. I did not play it. It looks no. cool. I like the idea of um the Night Springs thing being the the theme for it, doing the um the mm-hmm. what the hell is the Twilight Zone inspiration. I right. think that's a very clever idea for because like a DLC is by its nature kind of like isolated, which is the thing. It's the reason I don't play a lot of DLCs because I like a grander experience. But if you're gonna do something that's like a smaller isolated experience, basing it on like a serialized classic show like that, that is inherently bottle episodes Dude. by structure is very clever. <laughs> yeah. Red Dead Undead Nightmare still to me is like one yeah. of those standouts because it does that. It just makes it a bit wacky. Makes it its own little thing, you know? Yep. Um, why'd you guys make it up? Blumhouse Games are just, they're... Wow, yeah. They're publishing. They're, I, I did not, I knew I knew that they were doing a bunch of stuff. I was very surprised by how strong this showing was. And also, kind of how it, it follows the ethos of the movie stuff. Because obviously, what's his name? Eric Blum, whatever Blum guy is called. Me and my wife chew up those Blumhouse horror movies because they are, and I I read an interview with him years ago about the whole ethos of this stuff was like basically making art, partnering with like decent directors, younger directors, maybe ones that haven't had like their proper shot yet, aren't established. Obviously it's changed a bit now, Blumhouse has done some bigger budget stuff. But then working with them on like productions and scripts to basically cost save and do things like, yo, this whole thing takes place in a house and the conceit is that like, you know, the bad guy is blind or whatever, like doing all these like weird takes on horror. But there's a great interview where he was talking about like the problem with most horror games, most horror movies is like, you know, they're, they're going from one place to another place and there's like a car crash and there's a big car crash. And the thing that they need to do is they need to arrive at the next place and go, wow can't believe we survived that car crash. <laughs> just like, get rid of the expensive shit. Just focus. On, like, nobody cares. Make a 90-minute movie. Don't make it longer. Set, you know, don't set it in the woods, maybe. We're past that. But like, have a set. Use it, you know, just tighten the whole thing up. And it seems like, similarly, these games look like, they, what they look like to me is really small team indie games that are being given a modest amount of funding to really make a, a like a high production version of a small indie game um with an interesting idea and yeah the, a lot of the stuff they showed i was like oh i'll play that or i'll play that or i won't play that one but that's that's interesting that's not just another boring game yeah, yeah really i cool. i'm i'm happy to see someone doing this especially like specifically for horror games because as i you know i i like a couple of years ago or whatever played the silent hills for the first time the first couple and was like holy shit and it kind of got me to investigate a lot more survival horror games but as you start getting into them you realize that there's like there's not that many like really great survival like i've kind of played most of them in the last couple of years uh and it's interesting because the scope of them doesn't even have to be that grand. So, like, I think survival horror and horror games specifically are kind of the perfect candidate for this smaller game that's made very efficiently. Uh, in fact, I just beat Silent Hill 3, which took, like, seven or, like, eight hours, probably, all told, um, fucking around a bit. And when I went back and read about the development after beating it, uh, they it originally was a rail shooter, I think, and they had to scrap the whole thing. And the version of Silent Hill 3 that came out was... Um, was made entirely in nine months by oh, like that's crazy. a pretty reasonable sized team. So like, yeah, I mean, you can, I'm not saying it's the best Silent Hill game, but it was a very fun, you know, it, it felt like it didn't feel like a game that was made in nine months. It felt like a full ass video game. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool idea to kind of like do the, uh, do the indie film publisher thing for video games. Yeah. 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 There's not enough money going around in the scene, especially for, for smaller horror game devs. Like I feel like so many of them, if they had, six more months of funding could make you know a significantly yeah. better or more polished game in fact one of the ones that blumhouse picked up yes. uh, fear the yeah. spotlight I, yeah. I was like i want to check this out this looks really cool i go to the steam page and i'm like oh they have a steam page oh fear the spotlight is temporarily uh, temporarily unavailable on the steam store for a significant update so they actually launched the game in september of last year for like two weeks and then took it down because i guess blumhouse was like hey 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 hold on settle down here's some money you want to finish the, you want to do a little bit more uh so i'm very excited to see what it looks like in the end that's such a cool way to do things to to find something that's done and be like take it down we'll we'll we'll, we'll let you finish we'll give you some more money do, do what it you was 
it was playable at the the play days thing. Oh yeah, so I, got, I got to try. It. it was just a two person team, and they're they're based in L.A. and uh, it's really good. Like I, I think the nice. demo I played was like twenty minutes. The 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 look of it looks great. Like it is that kind of Silent Hill one. You're in a school and uh, you, you play as girls doing a seance and you summon something mm. horrific out of school. And like the the backstory and everything is like this is awesome. This is awesome. And um, yeah, I, so I'm really excited for that one. Um, but yeah, the whole Blumhouse Games thing is cool. Like it feels like every few months or however long we're just gonna get new ps1 retro horror games in. <laughs> right so like that was awesome and yeah. jason blumhouse jason blumhouse stepped on stage and i wanted to scream about megan um but i, I restrained myself <laughs> i love megan do so the, much do the dance run, do the dance yeah. <laughs> him, him and sam lake up there doing their fucking dances <laughs> it, it, it was cool it was cool yeah. to see sam lake uh one thing i didn't want to shout out because like i didn't see the xbox conference at all because i was driving up to play days during that um but when i got there people were like talking about like you see the gears of war trailer and stuff like that so it, it, it was cool to hear about but there were still like more things in the the keely thing um i was really surprised fatal fear there's a new fatal fury coming out right. city of the wolves which is now oh, a yeah. sequel to like a tw- 24 year old mark of the wolves garu game so that was playable and i think that like in addition to metaphor was one of my favorite games at the show it it plays like uh mark of the wolves very tight you know 2d fighting game it has the kind of like i would say street fighter 6 like art style where it's like 3D, but it's this two, like almost 2D ink cell shaded style. It looks good. It plays good. The music, everything, it sounds yeah. really, really good. Um, also at the uh, the the play days, um, the last sh- game they had at the Keeley show was Phantom Blade Zero, which mm. was a a new like Souls like Neo like yeah. from a studio based in Beijing. And I really liked it because it's way more accessible than like a Dark Souls game. Like I was able to beat the bosses in the in the tra- in the demo, and I was like, okay, I like this. And it has a as a hey, cool. No, man, you don't. Yeah. You know what that was? Do you know what that was? No. Welcome, but... welcome to being in the games press. They do, yeah, no. they, they fucking don't want you to feel like a baby, man. They don't want you to feel like a baby. They tune that shit so it's I bet, easy. I, I swear to God. And so you could see everything because it was like, yeah, I did three bosses. Top what the hell? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I gotta see a bunch of stuff and yeah, see. It's, well, shoot, now if it's harder, I don't know. But I, I really liked it. Um, but it was cool. It has a really cool parry system where it's like, I don't know. So if the parry system six, I feel like you can nail it. Like there's a, a like a red, if it's going to be a red attack, blue, blue. But you're, so you're constantly, as you're doing combat, you're, you're gauging L1 and R1 to like, to parry it. And then it feels so satisfying to pull off. So who, who knows if the windows will be the same, but I really <laughs> like Phantom Blade Zero. But the biggest surprise, I don't know if this was in the Keeley thing that got announced or where it got announced, but UFO 50 has a release date. Oh, yeah. oh it does. It's yeah. finally coming out. Uh, 2027. In sept- in, no, in September, in September. <gasps> and I can't, and so I, I gotta I gotta talk to to, D- to Derek you and the and the other developer at UFO fifty or sorry at the play days and yeah they had like the whole thing there all fifty games were playable oh, and wow. um and so yeah I got there was one game that felt like a samurai wind jammers <laughs> like okay. there was so much in there there was like. There is a full blown like um, like Lucas Art style adventure, <laughs> like a point and click adventure in a oh haunted house. I think they call the game Murder House. That's like a Resident Evil like. <laughs> there's there there's a, a so many games in here, and so it was fun. I only had like a twenty minute window to play it, but I would stand behind the couch and just look at people play everything. And I remember like talking to Derek. You demoed this game at like PAX twenty seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. Wow. I, I can't believe it. So I couldn't. It was just like this is here. It's real, and it feels like it's gonna be the ultimate like steam deck game because yeah they were saying it's like it's not it's like 50 full games with like credits that you can be in every every game there's like micro details and things like there's like a smash brothers clone in there like like uh, like a platform melee fighter like there's all this stuff that's just like that's awesome this is this is amazing and like i asked them like at any point in the process did you feel exhausted did you get burned out and it's like no we liked playing all 50 games so if we got tired of one we just move on to the next all thing right. so yeah yeah they they seemed so chill i'm like this is like the craziest most ambitious project ever so love do you think at any point in the development they were like is ufo 45 like a good title <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we're really close guys and we'll just, just... We, no we said 15 yeah we ufo yeah. 15 yeah. exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, that's really cool to see. Who knew making 50 games would take them over seven years? <laughs> Insane. Um, there, there was one game in the Blumhouse stuff I wanted to mention as well. Chris, Crystal Theater of Idols. Um, crazy art style uh, coming out of uh, Madrid, I believe, Vermilia oh, yeah, Studios. Um, and yeah, to, to I think it was um, both Jesse and Jeremy were making that point of, um, oh, and Frank, the two actually, of just like these small, the, these are small teams, right? And I think 
right now, like I'm talking to so many people on the on the publisher side and on the developer side and uh, about funding at the moment. And you know, a lot of the VC money is about getting those four or five games that they want to make. You know, they want them to sell millions. They want to make big. You know, f- go for a chunky games and maybe one of them will be a billion dollar game at some stage. And what I love about the Blumhouse thing is that they're doing the same thing as the movies in that. Like the burn rate on some of these teams is really low. If it's one or two people, like Jesse, you said, like if you grab, they take that game down off Steam. If that's what is it, two person team, Frank? Like the burn rate on that game is not that bad every month because it's only two yeah. people, or maybe it's two people and two contractors. Who knows? And then that thing, like if it makes a modest return, and that's what the Blumhouse thing was all about, was that like every one of our movies will make its money back, and one out of five of them, or one out of ten of them, will be a paranormal activity, which completely just fucking goes insanely high you know makes a shit ton of money and then we make a bunch of sequels and then we use that money to make more of these other weird horror things and like as long as like it's it seems completely stupid that this is some sort of out there way of running a publishing company and look there are lots of Annapurna have been doing I would say somewhat of a similar thing and devolver as well and interest investing in interesting ideas and, and wacky games and and stuff like that for sure yeah dave oshry yeah 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 very great 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 yeah great example maybe an even more salient example actually because it is so niche and i think what's cool about the blumhouse thing is that there's something i don't know what it is but do you guys feel like whenever i'm renting a movie or buying a game for some reason if it's horror themed it feels you don't rent movies <laughs> oh yeah you can do that still sorry My yeah name. do you not write a movie I might have no, read you can do that on, on Amazon app. I do that every once in a while yeah, yeah. exactly I yeah um, I watched Civil War last weekend <laughs> oh. which is a, a movie you rendered. went outside in a, in a metro area <laughs> what did <laughs> I oh Civil War, War. sorry there you yeah. go oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry no. well, that's a movie movie. <laughs> about absolutely nothing but it, I liked I liked just seeing America all fucked up <laughs> but like nothing Nothing at the, at the end of that movie. I was like, I have, I, I don't know what that was about, but that was weird and it kind of looked cool. So, all right, cool. Anyway, um, but yeah, there's something about horror things I feel like in particular that you're willing to either take a risk on or like if I watch a bad horror movie, I'm, I usually chat to my wife. That's why we watch them because like they're very fun. Like, in, there, there's something, the vibe is different with a horror movie. I'm not, I don't need it to give me a fucking ethical lesson. I'm just like, all right, we're just going to fuck around here. I, I think it's because uh, this is what one of the things, many things that I like about survival horror games so much that has, like, why I've caught the bug is I feel like the atmosphere in them is so strong. That they make good, like, um like hangout games. Like, because when I was growing up, uh, the reason I got into Resident Evil as a teenager is because I had a friend who was really into Resident Evil. And after school, I would go over his house and just watch him play Resident Evil. And it's kind of like the perfect game for that. Also, like, the controls in old survival horror games are kind of janky anyway. So it's not like you're getting this like crazy gameplay experience. It's it really is more just about like being in that world and seeing like the atmos- feeling the atmosphere and stuff. Um, so yeah, I feel like horror games make good like hangout games, party games, watching games. They're just I think it's just that atmosphere. They're like they have a really strong sense of place, so they're fun to just you know like talk over and experience and like talk about and just be in. Yeah, it's almost as well like the variable ratio schedules of these particular Skinner boxes are like slower or something. Mm-hmm. Where like you're waiting, you, you're in a horror game, you're waiting for the it to build up. You're, you're, there's almost like more patience. Definitely in a horror movie. In yeah. our movie, I'll sit through 20 minutes of them doing world building nonsense because I'm like, I don't okay, I know in the second act it's gonna get fucked up. I'm guaranteed that it's a 90 minute movie. It has Blumhouse on the front of it. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Um. So yeah, I don't know. It, it just seems I'm impressed by by Blumhouse's thing, and to see Jason Blum come out on the stage as well and do all that. Clearly, they're they're taking it seriously, um, or think there's good money in it, or both. Um, any other ones I'm seeing here? Uh, Digital Eclipse announced a Power Rangers game, which I think I heard Frank Howley screaming on the live stream. Was <laughs> that genuinely you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's so, so I sc- there's like in the pr- conference, you can hear me scream like three different times, uh, <laughs> and, and in the video, I have like a little compilation of it or whatever. But, Good job. Yeah, Frank yeah. is documenting all this for crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, because I go to so many wrestling shows, and like even at the AEW, you can hear me scream. Yeah, like I just I don't know. I like going to wrestling shows and, and performers not star like, them. No, no, you go get thrown out perhaps. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be yeah, full. Uh, um, but. 
No, even then you can still scream. You, well, you have to, there's like a 10 second period where it's okay. Okay. Like right. they come out, they introduce, and then the girls look around and they're looking for their simps and people are screaming. <laughs> and they so, laser on to Frank. No, they do. Yeah. They do. They look for people wow. holding like their merch towels and and like, and, the, and when the in the merch lines, they're like, oh, if you buy the shirt, they might notice you. Like they oh, have amazing. like, it's Love awesome. It. So Love they it. have 10 seconds where you can scream for your for the Joshis <laughs> and then it's back to, all right. Okay. Um, but, uh, no, so I was screaming for Jeff Keighley, all the jokes, you know. So, yeah, so <laughs> Jeff Keighley's like, and now a new Power Rangers game. Yeah! And then, and then it plays. Um, so, but that Power Rangers game looks awesome. It looks it's, cool. It's the pixel art. It also, at one point, it has that Mode like, 7 shit. Yeah, mm. like the Space Harrier. Like, it looks yeah. incredible. Like, this looks so cool. So, I don't, I hope they Dude, when it, it did the fun, when it did the do, 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 at the end, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm seven years old again. I'm so back. Yeah, yeah. At, there's there's one game that struck me as a as a as a Frank game. I forget where this was. I think I just saw a trailer for it on Reddit, and then uh, apparently I've just looked now, and apparently there is a uh, Steam Next Fest demo up for it already. Parcel Core. Oh man, have you guys seen yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. Have you played this, Jesse? Cool. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, like it's I was like, talking to my buddy about it last night. It's like Premium Rush. It's like that Joseph Gordon Levitt movie where you're like delivering parcels on a car or on a on a car on a bike. I do not uh, know this movie you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, oh, you never Premium oh, it's, Rush. It's, it's weird. It's one of those Joseph Gordon Levitt indie movies that he got to make uh, in his long streak. Um, it's it's okay. It's not the best thing ever, but like it's it's the game is really fun. It's like you ride on on your bike through this small city, uh, and you have these parcels that you deliver for a corporation. Good title, uh, and it's sort of like you're playing like uh, like DoorDash, like you're a DoorDash driver basically, picking up stuff for an app, and you can ride. But the bike it, it plays like the Tony Hawk or like uh, Jet Set or Crazy Taxi because you can like bounce on cars and they act like trampolines, or you can ride your bike on the wall and grind on railings and do tricks. It is, oh man, I was having a lot of fun playing. Last night it was really good. Excellent. Yeah, this this looks awesome. I'm just looking at it right now, but like, yeah, the, the art style, it's got the Sega blue skies. It, yeah, it's like Dreamcast, this looks amazing. Baby. It comes out September 3rd, so I immediately wish this. Oh, cool. That's oh, my birthday. Awesome. Oh boy, I can't nice. wait. That's my gift to myself then. The only other thing from SGF that I wanted to call out uh is Wander Stop. It's like a cozy oh, yes. game with a with a twist. What if it was fucked up a little bit? But it's the new it's game. Stanley from Parable, TV isn't it? Yes, yeah, from from David Reedon or Davy Reedon, I don't know what they go by, um, which like and the and the whole crew there. So I'm very excited to see more of that. That was like, yeah, baby, um, whatever they're doing, I'm here for it. Yeah, that was uh, they did a um, was that the one that they had on the Doctor Disrespect stream where he was like these fucking these woke games or whatever, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. like it's just completely <laughs> missing the fucking <laughs> like that. This is a this is a a bit. Um, which I thought was pretty, pretty funny. Classic. And then yeah, one, one, one last thing I got, I got to go like Capcom had a, its own booth and I got to see an impre- a, uh, demonstration for monster hunter wild. Oh, yes. I think it's what it's called. Mm. That looks amazing. That's coming out 2025. But the huge news of that is it's like the first monster hunter that's cross play. Mm. Cause like the last one monster Fine. hunter rise was, was so good, but it launched on switch. So it's like. God, can I just play this on PS5? And, and so now it's on different systems, but it's no crossplay. So you'd mm. have to like restart every time. And I just don't want to do that. But now Monster Hunter Wilds, whether your friends play on Switch, PC, PS5, Xbox, you can all play together. So, but that also means it's launching with way higher graphic fidelity than mm. Monster Hunter Rise on Switch. So it looks amazing. Um, and so I, yeah, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to play that. And then also at Capcom, I got to play. They announced like M Bison's coming to Street Fighter VI as part of their season pass stuff. So that lo- that look that looks really fun. There's also a random like capcom like small budget game called i forgot the title the title is so outrageous K- kunitsugami uh, Kunits- kunitsugami yeah it's almost like a tower defense like hack and slash game you like plant units and then a bunch of oni come into the village and you got to defend like the princess so but it's like arcadey but it's launching on game pass and then other console as well but i played that and i was like this is cool what the hell and so um i don't know it's cool to see capcom make like like B-level games of like, this is, this looks awesome. I'm, I'm all in, so yeah, that looks cool. That's really cool. I, I enjoyed seeing that one as well. Uh, but the game of the show for, of course, absolutely all of us, uh, the sequel to a game that we have covered uh, in the past uh, on Noclip, um, one of our favorite European studios. Finally, the world of Horizon Zero Dawn is coming oh. to Lego. <laughs> <laughs> this They started the, the show with this, and I was, my wife was like, my wife said two things. She said, who is this for? And then about 10 seconds later, she said, 
I want to play this. <laughs> and I think that, that it does like, look really good. This is yeah. this is the premier game for uh, cozy evenings with your significant other and hanging out with your nephew is what I would say this is for. <laughs> this is I have a tall neck. I have a Lego tall neck that I built, which is for Christmas. I think I got it for. Um, so there is like I can't, I, I want to talk to them about how this happened because you can see it right. You can be like, oh, okay, Lego started making like weird video game stuff and like you know selling expensive Lego kits to adults that are you know have arrested development like myself and then so you can tell that they did this one i think they did um a, 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 the st- strong what's something jaw i forget the other thing the the big yeah. um lock jaw but i don't know whatever fuck it's called so they've done thunder some jaw? This. So the, the thunder jaw nice work so there's a there's a uh there's a relationship there between gorilla and lego that exists but somehow they decided to do this and i'll play the shit out of the game it looks great I'm I'm into. I almost yeah. wished it was more. It was more like Astro Body, maybe, where it was like all the PlayStation fuckers. Let's get you know, let's get Vib Ribbon in there in Lego. Let's <laughs> get good pull, good pull. Get, yeah, let's get a uh, let's get the ball from Cooler World. I don't know. Like, let's get <laughs> also Astro Bot looks fucking so good. Yeah, I mean, they, oh. just, they can't miss. Love the crowd it. can't miss. Yep, they're, they're so well. good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll play that silly little Horizon game. I'll play the shit out of it. Uh, anything else? Any other bits and bobs? Uh, there was a game that showed that actually, uh, I just checked, it came out yesterday, which oh. uh, is surprising, Psychroma. Um, this was a game that I started, the trailer started, and I was immediately like, oh, this looks yes. so cool. I do not want to watch the trailer because I want to play it and be surprised. It is a, uh, like, what is it? A side, a narrative-driven side-scroller is how they describe it, where you play a digital medium. Uh, it kind of looks like... Oh. A, Cyberpunky like, detective mystery game. Oh. Yeah, it launched yesterday, Very right? Good. Yeah, it came out yesterday. There's also a demo, which I have not played. Uh, Ooh. But uh, it looks very good. Psychroma. It's it's from Rocket Adrift. If you're having trouble Googling, it's from a team called Rocket Adrift. Um, yeah, I like, like the look of it. Oh, they made Shall Raptor we, Boy. Shall, it's cute. It's what? <clears throat> they made uh, the, the team that made that previously did Raptor Boyfriend. It's like a. You play as a. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, Raptor. Raptor Boyfriend. It's a great name as well. Very yeah. strong. Uh, it's no killer bean though. Um, anyway, <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, leave the wor- wonderful world of summer games. It sounds like, yeah, I, I, I guess final thoughts from folks about it. How did you, I feel somewhat disconnected from it cause I watched the stream on Friday and then I basically played catch up on Monday morning. I watched Microsoft, um, when I was having a bit of lunch and, and sort of, um, caught up with it that way. Um, I, I don't know. I think I was having low expectations and they were probably, exceeded but again again i think a lot of the big budget big stuff i wasn't as interested in and the stuff that i find myself most interested in is the weird shit the triple i stuff and a lot of the the single i stuff yeah i mean this is this is definitely like personal subjective taste thing for me but i yeah like you said the the games that didn't really excite me are the the big budget things because I feel like a lot of them are reboots and and sequels and requels and seaboots. Safe picks. Uh, seaboots. <laughs> yeah, sequels. That's and, a fucking great. Is that a new? T- Do you make that up or is that I, a thing people say? No, I'm just messing around. Seaboots is great because <laughs> it's you. like a sea game that's getting a reboot or like <laughs> or it's a reboot that kind of looks a bit mid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not. Or it's like the C-boot. fable thing where it's like a sequel reboot. It's a seaboot. Oh, it, that too. Oh, yeah. Sequel that reboot. Too. Yeah. Um, Shit. Then we need another one, D-boot or something. A D-boot, uh, yeah. D-boot, I don't know. No, that's... that's a D-boot boot is when you make a... It's a reboot that's a D-make. You know, it's like a PS1 ah. version. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, I feel like the things that interested me most were on the smaller end of uh, of, of budget projects for this. Like, the, the smaller the game, the more intriguing I found it was generally a, a trend in the show, which I think kind of speaks to the fact that, like, the types of games that I'm most interested are largely kind of absent from these shows for, for budgetary reasons and scope reasons. I feel mm. like the, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm more interested in games that are made by, by smaller teams and with smaller budgets and taking bigger risks, I guess. So I, I've, I, whenever these shows happen, there's a, there's a part of me that has like the childlike joy of flipping through Nintendo power and being like, Whoa, new games are coming. New and then Mario, there's a part whoa. of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there's like the cynical adult, part of my brain that's like i don't want to like sit and watch commercials for three hours like i but because yeah. most of it i just feel like i'm like oh cool it's like e- uh, look esports are ha- there's esports and then there's e-sports. like a new hero sh- looter hero looter shooter with cards and i don't care yeah but no i agree i think like there's so many showcases especially as time goes on i remember watching 
I think one of the first E3s when they started streaming everything. And at the time I was like, there's too much of this. And now I'm like, there's so many more showcases, but I do find myself connecting with the ones that are like the gorilla uh, collective showcase that mm. the mix did. That was really good. There was a lot of cool indie stuff there or, um, uh, PC future gaming games. show PC yeah. gaming oh, oh, show. Future, yes. Sorry. Future gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Like those events where they're showing off stuff that clearly is made by teams that are smaller that are, you know, they're trying to, they have like a directorial vision where I feel like when I'm watching the Xbox showcase, you're right. Like I see a new version of a thing I played when I was 12 years old and I'm like, Whoa, dude, it's like I'm 12 all over again. But also I'm like, I don't know. I see the way that they make the trailers and I'm like, this is a feature highlight. This is the checkbox. Okay. You got to show that you can do this. You got to show that you can do that. Show this feature. Um, or a cinematic it, tone thing. Or cinematic yeah. tone, exactly. I, I, I'm yeah. a With a celebrity guy. voice actor. I can't fucking, I just don't care. Yeah, I, I yeah. just, yeah, no, no, absolutely. So, I don't know. Part of me is excited, and part of me is like, I don't know. I want I want more weird, smaller things. I like watching those weird side showcases where there's a lot more skin in the game, and they're, they're showing off their vision a lot more, so. Yeah. I, I feel like we're coming in the bell curve on a lot of this. Oh, well, obviously we're coming in the bell curve on a lot of this acquisition stuff. But just in terms of the creative aspect of it, like when Microsoft or whoever, I don't want to just point this all at Microsoft. There's plenty of folks who are, you know, have done this. But when, when these studios get acquired, it's because of what they've made in the past. That's what the yeah. value is. The value is in, you know, not just the IP, but in, in the game that they made before that made this much money. So then obviously... Let's go try that and do that again. There is no value. Well, there there probably is, but it's a less easily communicated to your shareholders value in the intelligence and capability and fusion of the team and their ideas and and all that. So it's sort of like a like a slow death self fulfilling prophecy that we're we, those studios are locked into making the sequels for these games that give them their value, but it's the value of those IPs and of those ideas is diminishing because games yeah. want new ideas and need fresh ideas. And sometimes you can inject a little bit of new idea into an old idea and it works, you know, Call of Duty still sells and they, they've, they've managed to get that, you know, balancing act pretty good, but it doesn't and work. And I think the other angle is like sacrificing the brands too. It's like the, the internal game brand part of it. Like I'm not to be, you know, IP pilled. I'm not, you know, I'm not a corporate C-suite guy, but I, I see, Machine Games making an Indiana Jones game, and they're doing a great job. I'm sure there are people on the team who are really excited about that. But, dude, Wolfenstein is good. Like, Wolfenstein's already good. Mm. You know, you could have just had them make Wolfenstein 3 next, and I don't think it would have been the end of the world. Those games are popular. They're a well-known franchise. Maybe they don't sell super great. I'm not sure what the numbers on that are. But, like, that's that's the kind of brand that I feel like you would want to cultivate and, like, build more on. So they're doing Indiana Jones Mm. now, and it's like, that means the next Wolfenstein game won't be another, who knows, right, three, four, five years uh, same thing with like uh, Arcane Leon. I'm excited for Blade. That looks cool, but right. also like I would have been okay with Death Loop too. Like they have brands already. If you want to build just, on a brand, why are you bringing in others? You know. I presumably I would I agree with you, and I presume or assume rather that it has to do with the business of working with someone else's IP. That for those gigs that they are yeah. splitting responsibility, that they're probably getting a cash injection. And maybe they're not, or maybe they're just maybe it's just cheaper to do it and and i'm not gonna like i'm with you i would prefer to see like i love death loop and that was a new and interesting ip that came out of arcane leon um but also redfall happened and that yeah. destroyed the studio and that's true you know well i mean that didn't necessarily destroy a studio microsoft's um grand ambition uh destroyed that uh, arcane austin but yeah, you. I, the, the problem I always find is for any argument that I make with relation to the business of games, it's very easy to find a counterfactual that maybe disproves it or, or tells you it's the exception to the rule. But yeah, I, for whatever reason, that look, at least all of us, and we're all fairly different. We've got different ages here, different backgrounds. And for a lot of us, a lot of that stuff rang hollow. And, you know, for, for many of us as well, we were the, the generation that that was aimed at. There are a lot of games that we really enjoyed. Um, Frank, final thoughts on Summer Games Weekend for you, in-person Summer Games Fest? In-person Summer Games Fest, one of the best conventions I've ever been to. So many free foods wow. and drinks. Great. <laughs> swag. What was the games it's, Tell us games what you got. What you get. Oh, in terms of swag or food and drinks? Both. Oh. 
Okay, so Devolver Digital had free margaritas. I think they called it Devolveritas. I felt so lame, though, because I, I went up, and the bartenders there were so nice. Like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, this is great. There's so much free food and drinks. You know, I go to a lot of conventions, and the girl was like, yeah, cool for you. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just ex- <laughs> Play it Anyways. cool, Frank. I was so excited. I was like, I talked to Jason Schreier, like, this, there's so much free, the free coffee, free drink. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> he was just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see the new Sonic Shadow Generations. Oh, yeah. my God. Shadow's there. He's so cool. Did you get the um, drink? It, there was no Shadow. Oh, you know what? There was a Sega Ice Atlas creams? food truck. There was like, yeah, S- yeah. Sega, Sega and Sonic desserts. I spent my food tickets on pizza, two Poke Bowls, and Wait, a food Peter tickets. Rep. Was this fucking yeah. socialist... Uh, Dude, yeah, you you Russia go in or... and there, there's there's food vouchers. <laughs> Again, this is the real scoop. No one's Frank talking about. Frank was in the bread this. line and it had like Mario <laughs> cooked on the side of it. Like, <laughs> here do you uh, go. Um, one, you said. can have one Sonic oh. or two Shadows. Where's he going? He's off. He's go, he's gone off range. He kept folks. the ball. Back. In, here he is. in terms of swag, I got a what bunch got? of Monster Hunter and Capcom stickers. Nice, so nice. very sick. Uh, for my friend, I'm going to give her uh, Hello Kitty sunglasses and stickers. There is a Hello Kitty Island Adventure. It's a mermaid. Uh, yeah, coming coming out in the future. Dude, to, Butter's to his favorite game. So <laughs> it, it's a lot. Um, but no, it was really cool. Again, uh, Jeff Keighley was also just there on the show floor, very accessible. Uh, I, I, I did. I want to go up and say thank you, but I was like, ah, I'll, I'll leave him alone. But Jeff <laughs> Keighley, very awesome. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. So I would love to go back to Summer Games Fest okay. play days anytime. Okay. And then... Honestly, the really crazy cool thing is I got to go to the Giant Bomb at night oh, yeah. studio, which basically just turned into a giant party, and there was free pizza and an open bar. So just you know, <laughs> it was great. But beautiful. I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't want to say Dan Riker was very sweet, and like I got to talk to Jan and Jeff. That nah, guy's an and, asshole. That guy's no. an asshole. <laughs> I got. I got. I, I never meet. Uh, uh, there's another person on the Giant Bomb team, Nikki. They they were very sweet, mm. and like just everyone there was like, God, everyone in the games was so nice. I got to like Jake Decker, Dave Oshry. Yeah. So. It was awesome. Jake Decker, really uh, uh, host and editor of our. Wait, did he edit that or did you edit that, Jeremy? I did not City. edit that. Okay, maybe. I so think we did, did Forgotten City. Or, Forgotten yeah. City Doc. Yeah, yeah. So. Dave Oshry from oh, Dear Dwyer. See, we're fucking. We're fucking everywhere. We're in your. We're we're in your party, eating your pizza, making your video game docs. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for heading up, Frank. Really appreciate it. Thank um, you. Uh, we got a little bit of time to talk about it. Probably just as well we don't have that much time to talk about these next fest demos because we're going to put this other video out. Um, let's throw it out there, uh, Jesse. I feel like you're you're the tip of the spear on this stuff. What what type of stuff do you think people should hear on Friday? They're hearing the podcast. What should they be downloading uh, for the weekend? No pressure, uh, man. Well, you know, <laughs> if if I don't cover something, you can always uh, check out my Twitter. I've got a thread yes. there of. Tons of games. I'm sure I'll be adding more as time goes on. But there was a lot of really cool stuff at this. What's, what's this your handle? Fest. So people know. Uh, at Garage, just at my last name. It's If you're watching the video version, it's down there. If you're not, G-U-A-R-A-S-C-I-A. Uh, you can find me on there and follow me and see all the fun new games that I'm showing off in the next fest thread. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff this year. I don't feel like it's as many um, heavy, heavy hitters as it was the last couple next fests. This one's more like... If you're looking for weird off-brand indie stuff or like something that maybe you've never heard of before, scroll through the lists. You're going to find something cool. Uh, The ones that stand out to me the most, uh, like Danny said, we're doing a video, so we're going to cover some of these things again, probably. Um, But I want to shout out two in particular that I think are really cool uh, that most people should check out and we'll have a good time with. There's one called Grun, G-R-U-N-N. Okay. It's a game where you're landscaping. Uh, You cut grass and you, you, you water plants and uh, you get a trowel and you get to dig up dirt. Uh, nothing weird happens. Uh, you should really play okay, it. It's, okay. 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 It's super I, I also, uh, I'm not going to say anything more, but I also very much enjoyed the Grun demo. Dude, it was, it was, it's cool. really cool. It was cool. Is you play this, it. I love so, cutting grass. The studio is Sock Pop Collective. Is yes. this one of the ones you talked about before, Jeremy, where it's, they just make a shit ton of games? Yeah. Last yeah. time, I mean, I haven't read, I haven't like updated that per, there's a world in which they have changed since I read about this. But uh, at some point I read that basically they're like a game dev collective that just make a bunch of different projects and kind of collectivize so that, you know, it, like you were saying about Blumhouse, like make a bunch of games. It's like that, except it's one studio doing all of it, but they make a ton of stuff and then something pops off like uh, they made stuff. Stacklands, if I recall correctly, and Stacklands right. was like a bigger hit than a lot of the stuff they make. Like, uh, you know, I mean, they have like little games where you're like a weird bounty hunter that I've played, but most people probably have not. Um, but yeah, when you when you make that many things, eventually something pops. So it's, it's cool. 106 of them. 
on Steam. 106 That's games. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many people they have working there, but they are uh they're busy. Wild. Um and, uh, sorry, one Jesse, of the other go ones. Ahead. What else? Sorry. One of the other ones that I'm going to talk about probably more in the video, definitely more in the video. It's called Uncle Chop's Rocket Shop. Now, when <laughs> okay, I tell you what this game is about, What's up with me in the four word game names? Hey, eh? Tidy Terry's Turbo Trip. I played Uncle a bunch Chops of that over the weekend. Shop. Yeah, do you really, like it? Really like us. Thank you for the right? recommendation. Yeah, yeah great Steam Deck game. Really cool. Perfect for that. Um, but Uncle Chop's Rocket Shop. Say that five times fast. Is like, <laughs> oh my goodness! I, so I saw the pictures on Steam, and I saw a little uh, gameplay clip that happens when you hover over stuff on the next fest page and i was like what the hell is this like he plays a little fox guy and you you repair spaceships that show up at this place and, and like one of the screenshots you're talking to the, the like the devil i was like what what are we doing what is this so i was like i have to play this demo and see what this is about this is like i can't stop thinking about this game it's so bizarre so basically like without going too deep into it you're just repairing ships and when the ships show up they're like spaceships and you, you work in the garage and when they land down on the planet, you're repairing issues with them. So you take a job and someone will be like, my ship needs more oil. And so each part of the ship has like a panel. You open the panel. There's an oil thing. And to figure out how to solve, like what's wrong with it, you have to diagnose the problem. And you have to interact with this, this system that you don't understand fully using a book that has like dialogue, like, like things in it, diagrams that you have to like really genuinely figure out what's wrong with the thing. It is, it is like so well made and what, it has so much potential the- you can see it. What's the roguelite aspect to it? Because that's the part that freaked me out. I was like, how do you make a game like this that's also has like a weird meta progression or whatever? You have like three days to uh, get enough money to pay rent, R-E-N-T. Okay. Uh, and uh, you have to uh, you have to get the money by doing the jobs. And like you, you build up um, access to different things. There's like ability upgrades you can get eventually. Uh, and they, they sort of just build up over time. And you... Uh, you, you, you see as the time goes. I don't want to say too much because it's it, the way okay. that it goes is weird and the upgrades that you get are weird. And like, how is it only three days if you have to pay your rent? I don't understand. You'll, you'll see it when you try it. It's it's man. This is a really fun, cool game. OK, I like it. Uncle. A lot. Was it Uncle Chops? Uncle Rocket Chops Rocket Shop? Rocket Shop. Yes, sir. Man. OK, uh, Jeremy, you're up next. OK, what you got? I got got. I got to pop this one at the top. Elation for the Wonderbox 6000. Um, yeah, baby. Nice. This is a game by Digital Tchotchkes, a uh, game dev and artist who I have I've been following their work for a while because I was uh, I was gripped by the bizarre sort of like claymation stuff that they do. I just think it's it's so charming and so unique. Kind of reminds me of um, what is it? Oh, the Neverhood. It's kind of like in, oh yeah, in the same universe as that kind of feel, but like very much its own thing. Elation for the Wonderbox 6000 is a game where I, the demo is incredibly short, so I, I have to just explain the opening scene of Elation for the Wonderbox 6000. You, uh, it opens on a, a, a screen, and there is text appearing in this like manifesto about the importance of games as this like highfalutin, overly flowery, like, you know, the, the, throughout the ages, like there's been like painting and cinema and like this. And then it's like, games deserves to be on this list of the arts, and no finer game has existed than elation for the wonderbox 6000 so okay. so the name of the game is a reference to a fictional game in the world of the same title oh boy. uh sort of a tenacious d tribute situation is how i would describe okay it. yes um, right piece yeah. of piece of media about fictional piece of media and uh based on this po- uh, emotional post on the forum he gets banned and flamed and people are like i'm gonna come to your house and kill you and uh <laughs> and this triggers a an, an adventure where um the protagonist is like you know what i'm gonna go into the city and find a copy of elation for the Wonderbox 6000 so it is a the writing is so fucking funny and like so good and it's like i don't know it just it just like it just struck me that all of the other writing and all the other demos I had played was very good, but this was one that was like punching through and like it was like a game about games in a way that felt so smart and self-aware of the medium. And it was just like, I, it's just my favorite demo I played of the whole thing. It struck me so hard. Some, nice. when, when, when a game gets you on the funny bone, I think it really helps a lot. And Jesse, you said last week that you weren't sure if other people would like it, but you really liked the humor in what's Tiny like Turbo Trip, yeah. Yes, um, and I do too. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I nice. think it's like it totally hits the hits the mark. Um, Elation for the Wonderbox Six Thousand as well. Just I don't know how you can explain this fucking art song, man. It's like <laughs> it's like it looks like claymation, but like on a Windows ninety five PC or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. It's like early PC claymation. It's a, it's a, I should explain. It's a first person like um, RPG. I don't know. It's a first person game where you game. explore and talk. 
to people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, God, it looks so weird. It's so Freaking. good. It's so, it's so good, strange. dude. I like. I've. I've. You know. It's. Uh, there's always like a. You want to like temper your excitement when something strikes you this hard, just from a little glimpse of it. So I don't want to like overstate its importance without having played the full game. But it is like. It, it hit me in a way that games writing has not hit me since I played Disco Elysium. And I mean that so sincerely. Like, I'm not trying to, like, big up this fucking game because I love the demo. It's just, like, there, I just thought that I... It's very rare that I'm, like, opening every single cupboard in a demo just in case there's a little bit of flavor text I missed. Dude, those are big <laughs> words. That's a big comparison. So I, 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 really, I trust you. I know you I wouldn't really say that it. lightly. Yeah, so I trust it's you. It's, like, it's so good. <laughs> Uh, I run through a couple of quickies for myself. Yeah, yeah. Yes, real okay, quick. Can I uh, shout out one that I haven't played yet? Real quick. I just, I just remembered it. Frank, you should check this one out. It's called Five Hundred Caliber Contracts. I don't know what the fuck it is, oh, but yes. the art style is so funny. It's like your streams That's... got turned into a video game. It's a uh, Bryce Boucher. Boucher. I don't know how to say his name. Um, the person who oh, made. Oh my god! Uh, right, Danny, dude. <laughs> it's like a Newgrounds, Newgrounds platformer shooter where you're propelling yourself with a giant sniper rifle. Yes. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. It's it's the dev who made okay. uh, Fatum Batula, uh, which was a cool game from 2020 that I liked. Oh, oh cool. my god. I don't know uh, what you even call this art style. And you know, a oh, jeez, it's, it's there's oh god. Uh, the looked, trailer they the trailer they even used the Windows Movie Maker text font. Like it's yes. 2005 yes. internet core. Yeah. Like yes. it's ten, it, no like the main character looks chibi. It's got Windows word paint. There's an aim message from someone named Thomas Gachi 96. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Oh, genius! It looks genius. like somebody turned a Winamp skin into a game. Yeah, oh. it's it's like a it's like a Y2K like uh, uh, what was the one from last year? Uh, Hypnospace Outlaws. Yeah. It's like that yeah. same like lineage. Uh, yeah, holy crap. Yeah, go follow oh, Bryce Lord. on Tumblr. Uh, I, I don't know who uses Tumblr these days. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say very... we talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. Just do it. It's on brand. You though. mentioned Fat and Batula as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I have not played that, but that's another. Oh, it's a really cool game. Another one I've, I think you mentioned it before or something. Um, okay, a couple of quick hits from me. Uh, two uh, turn-based tactics games, which could not be more different. One that I've been waiting to play for years and one that I did not know existed and now I'm fucking in love with it. Um, the first one, Tactical Breach Wizards, the uh, Tom Francis developed game. It's finally coming out. Um, I have a big affinity for Tom Francis because I was a PC gamer UK reading reader for a long time. I've hung out with him a bunch of GDCs over the years. Um uh, Gunpoint was the game that he made first. Uh, he made Heat Signature after that, and this is the game he's been working on since. I think it's, I don't know if it's technically the first 3D game, but it's the first, like, fucking capital D 3D game. Um, it is a game where you are uh, a bunch of, like, fantasy-based SWAT team members in the UK who are knocking indoors, and then essentially it is a turn-based puzzle of a room of like you've got your uh your um you know wizard character who is able to force like the okay i may I might have to explain this a little bit the way that the game works is that you have a main character who is able to basically like foresee the future and this mechanically within the game allows you to pretty much play out the entire thing see how it goes and then rewind and then do it a different way so it's kind of like whatever there was a game we i talked about last year that had like a save scumming built into the design of the game thing i mentioned in the past like six months i forget which game it was um is it that one from Mimi similar... games it is you're right okay. it was um the 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 pirate one remember yeah. where you could make the little bubbles oh yeah. shadow game shadow Gambit. Gambit. yes yeah 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 um uh doesn't say much that I keep forgetting the name of that game. I need to get a tattoo of it or something. Um, but it's really cool. It, 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 there's the demo is a lot of like layering stuff on. So you go through it slowly, and then by the time you get you get to the end of it, is like you're doing quite a lot of things. Uh, what I love about it's the writing as well. I like I like the game yes. playing it, but the writing's really smart. The chemistry is For, so good between the two main characters. It's really, oh, you played it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Excellent. a blast. Yeah, it's a. Uh, a lot of fun, very smartly written. You know, Tom was a writer for a long time, so perhaps not surprising. Um, definitely check it out. And then the other one is Metal Slug Tactics. Dude, I adore Metal Slug. I don't like playing Metal Slug. I adore looking at Metal Slug. Whenever yes. I go in an arcade and there's a Metal Slug, I go, fuck yeah, Metal Slug. I play it for 30 seconds. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't like these games. Metal Slug Tactics is like perfect for me because it looks gorgeous. It's even more beautiful now because it's isometric. So it's like a, you know, it's an isometric grid um, and you are uh, 
just playing a like I the closest thing to it is probably into the breach or something, you know, because it's like a grid based, gorgeously drawn fucking tactics game. Um there's a lot of unique mechanics in it. Absolutely adore it. I think this is like probably the first Metal Slug game I'm ever going to complete. Really great production value. Very, very cool. Um, nice. uh, 301's really quickly to mention. Caravan Sandwich is a very uh, beautiful looking um, open world, well, exploring game. You're 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 a witch. You're, are you a witch? You're, they, they cut out the start of the game for the demo. You're a girl who's got access to this caravan and is basically just like exploring this world. You're collecting things. You're jumping around. I love games about exploring worlds. That's what I'm into, right? And that it's definitely scratching that itch. Um, I Am Your Beast, which I know people have been talking about yeah, a lot. It's sort of dude. blown up over the really past fun. couple Fuck. of days. Uh, it's just another game. I feel like saying something is strange, Scaffold's next game is stupid because they're just going to announce something ne- tomorrow. He already did. They already did. They just, yeah. 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 just announced there's a new game yeah, coming yeah. up before uh, this one comes out. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> insane. Uh, yeah, first per- what well, It's like super hot. It's like a first person uh game about speed running these tiny little levels and being john wick um it's a you know very fast paced shoot it reminded me a lot of super hot really like it um and then another game i haven't played enough of uh the altars this is the 11-bit studios oh, yeah. fucking is it uh, is it moon is it it's yes. just hard sci-fi spoilers for moon <laughs> spoilers for moon <laughs> um, uh, they also 11 bit also published the invincibles so they clearly have a hard on for this type of fucking like eastern european style hard sci-fi thing um they're on fire, man. And I'm not just saying this because they randomly sent us a bunch of codes for Indica over the weekend <laughs> that I then just posted to all of our Battle Pass holders who Speaking I of. did not mention. <laughs> <laughs> Great segue, though. So you can all go get your Indica uh, Steam codes because I'm very sorry to Eamon Slattery, Harry Flanagan, <laughs> Battle Royale Games, Arno, Richard Matherson, James Brown. You get an Indica code. You get an Indica code. <laughs> uh, Mark Rojas, Ryan Cobb, Tucker Morgan, Crimson Cyclist, Sven Hooster, Pez, you and Nate, Tim Robinson, Forrest Pruitt. Tim Robinson, by the way, in Skate, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, not the not the um, not the patron, the the uh, skateboarder slash actor. Uh, Forrest Pruitt, Jonathan Kremen, Eric Hamilton Schneider, <laughs> Everlet, Zachary Snyder, Alex Sharp, Alex Goucher. George Sakotas, Jacob Godserve, Tohir Tiliav, and Ryson. Uh, there were more than 10 people in the Battle Pass, so go get your Indica codes. Um, but yeah, I feel like I feel like this is almost prophetic because when we did the Noclip uh, crew cast uh, or the Noclip panel at uh, PAX West, there was somebody in the audience, a woman who said, you should do a documentary on 11-Bit Studios. And I was like, why would you do a documentary on a publisher? Like, I don't know, like should we? Is that a thing? Do they make good games? And I've used, for the past six months, all I've been doing is talking about games like The Thaumaturge and The Invincible and fucking uh, uh, Indica the and all that sort of stuff. They, they have another one they're publishing called uh, Creatures of Ava, which was really cool as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're on, they're on fire. They're on a hot streak. I don't think they've done it's anything wild. bad in a long time. Hot snakes. Um, they also made This War of Mine back in the day. Oh, which yeah. I did yeah. Not that was realize. their start, right? Yeah, that was an in-house developed thing, but I guess they have uh, um, since... Um, gone out and, and done a bunch of uh, publishing deals as well uh, a game that perhaps is more relevant now than ever obviously it was about the i, I don't think it's is it actually do they say it's about the siege of sarajevo or is it just like implied that it's about the siege of sarajevo so. but in, in any case um what the awful shit that's going on in gaza at the moment um uh, uh a salient game to be playing at the moment uh yeah the altars i've not played enough of it i'm i've finished the prologue no I've, yeah i must have finished the prologue at this yeah. did you thing. get to like the bit where they you get i don't what's know going i don't think i have actually so i think oh, i have okay. to play a little bit more i i rushed this right before this podcast because i wanted to play some of it and i immediately like i love the base stuff i love the yeah. um the tone of this the writing yeah, i'm just gonna play some more of that yeah uh can That's i good. quick pop a couple of demos yeah. here um demon school uh we've talked about it before oh uh, there's a demo out. Great. there's a demo out it's a long demo too uh it's like three I believe hours it is, i believe it is three hours yeah. i did not play the entire thing and i'll tell you why it's the same reason i don't watch good trailers it's because i want to play the full game um mm. yeah demon school is a kind of like persona 2 looking um tactics rpg it's kind of got that uh that like anime series feel about like the group of paranormally involved high schoolers um and kind of that like madcap not like 
schlocky but kind of like 80s movie feel to it that's like quirky and like a little fun but the holy shit the tactics the combat system it's very rare that i play a game that has a combat system that is like doing a new take on a on a classic like tactics rpg combat and they do something new and i go holy shit this is like incredibly clever and fresh and new uh it has this like directional thing where you're trying to reach the other side and seal it after killing sufficient demons and um and it has this sidestep system that i've never seen in anything before that's like a free sidestep move it just like i just i love the combat system in this i to the extent that i don't even really think the writing is for me i i get Mm. like why people like this flavor of writing it's not my cup of tea uh but i am probably going to devour demon school in spite of that um nice. i'm really excited to see more demon school um i'm gonna play this demo i've not actually sat down and played it yet um uh uh f- friend at brandon sheffield big f- supporter of his work over the years oakland game dev um uh bizarrely he worked on a game years ago called gun house um and one of the guys who worked on that game was like roommates with my friend in ireland in game Whoa. design college Small and world. helped me uh make my final year project oh cool. fix my fix my final year project awesome. so shout out shout out to shane um shane gavin um the yeah so i i i've i've liked those dudes for a long time and they do a lot of like there are a lot of contract work you know they they pay the bills doing a bunch of work here and there but um this game seems like it's i think hopefully is going to be the game that really pops off for necrosoft it looks it looks just production they clearly have spent a long time working on it um you know they've uh, I, I I'm I, they have a publisher for it. It seems uh, it looks really cool production wise. It looks really impressive. So yeah, I'm gonna go check that demo. It's as well. very. Is there any more, Jeremy? Yeah, a couple more. Um, uh, Conscript. This is a game I've been following for a while. This is a World War One survival horror game. Um, kind of has the top down pixelated perspective of. Uh, like Signalis is what I would compare it to. Uh, the thing that I think, there's a few things that I really like about it, but the thing that I think is most brilliant about it is something that I've actually been thinking recently is that survival horror games are often about these sparse environments where there's kind of no one around and then you finally run into someone and it's like a fucked up guy that attacks you. Uh, Con- Conscript being in the middle of fucking the Battle of Verdun is so brilliant. Oh, you're kidding me. It's oh, about wow. Verdun. Yeah. That is wild. And it has like a really good story lead up, even in the demo, to like explain the context. And Oh my God. Uh, but then you like go out, they're like, you got to get to the front line or they're going to shoot you if you're not at the front line. And you get out there and there's just like soldiers rushing into the trench. And it's like, I, I don't know, something about like, I'm like, this is a survival horror game. There's not supposed to be this many dudes around and I'm shooting my fucking Lee Enfield into some dude's head. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's a very different, the, the the war is horror. And I think a lot of war media is about like, oh, it's like noble and grand. And like, it's about heroes being heroic. And this is a game where it's like, no, it's, it's, it's as scary as any fucking zombie movie. What was the, the there was a, uh, was there an amnesia game that was set during World War One? Oh, uh, the bunker is that what it's called? Yes, yeah, the bunker. Yes. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of that. That was the first time I had seen somebody do that thing. Yeah, which is the like, is this world? Is this World War One, or I'm, or am I in a World War One survivor's nightmare version of World War One? Yep. Or I guess Death Stranding. I feel like there's like another game that did this. Death Stranding did it a bit with their like they have some weird th- historical war flashbacks you end up being in with that danish actor have not Mad- played mads it. mickelson right it's like it's got does a bit of that stuff too um okay yeah that this this game looks this is another game just the art style just like conscript just looks completely mad uh there's a quote on their steam page where you know like they'll have like the ign says like it's whatever uh there's mm. a quote that says it's from dave oshry and it just says i can't believe someone hasn't thrown millions of dollars at conscript <laughs> which is <laughs> i think says it all that's good stuff um one more that i wanted to shout out is yeah. uh is threshold um a uh, really interesting demo for this because it's not a demo of the actual game it is a uh like a prequel prologue. Like it's like a separate it's like a, chapter. Oh, it's like a mood piece. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just like it plops you into the world, but not in a, it's not a part of the game. It's just like a, a separate little mini chapter of the game that doesn't actually that isn't in the game. And I think that's really cool because Ground Zeros. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it, but it, it, it's like Sometimes when I play a demo, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I just want to like play the rest of this. It's very cool to have a separate experience that gives you a taste of it, but is I won't have to like replay when I play the game. Yeah, that's that is the one annoying thing about some of this stuff. Yeah, is that you wish you could just jump right in. Um, 
I'm feeling that way about the altars as well. I'm like, yeah. a couple of times I was like, I'm definitely going to play this. Do I need to? And it's coming out. Is it coming out soon? Did they, they end... Soon-ish. It, it comes out later this year, I believe. Um, but yeah, when, once you get to the, the thing in the altars, you'll know when you've okay. gotten to the thing. Um, I think I, I think the key like art tell, does the key art tell you what the, the key thing art is? might give away what it is, but the way it happens okay. is very cool. Like I oh, didn't okay. know why there were more than one of the guy. Right. So when you see it, you're like, oh, okay, okay. cool. Stuff. I will stop playing. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. That's enough for that. If you want more, uh, you know, maybe detailed and visual, a nicely edited version of us talking about some of the best games we played at Next Fest. Um, then uh, head on over to No Clip Crew and hit subscribe and uh, wait for Jesse to edit an entire video <laughs> in the next uh, in the next while. Let's say um, uh, that's a podcast, folks. I think we've done enough here. A lot of stuff covered. Uh, Dear Dwyer, episode three is obviously up at the moment. All about. Uh, Jake Solomon's new studio and, and the games he's worked on in the past. The Wipeout documentary went up. Uh, great job, everyone. Uh, awesome work on the edit, Jeremy. Great gameplay, Frank. Um, that was a really fun one to put together. Uh, pretty much the perfect no clip doc for me where it's like not going to do insane numbers, but we are getting so many people just saying, I'm so glad this video exists that it's like, that's exactly it. I think we're, it's like targeted right in my like pride gland because that's the, that's the fucking shit i love didn't right? you get that removed earlier this year <laughs> i think you're right Jeff. No, well, yeah i'm so proud of all of you you're so exploded. humble now after it exploded exactly. <laughs> um so yeah go check out our documentary on the music and sound of wipeout over on no clip um we've got a couple of other things brewing i don't know what we've officially talked about publicly yet but there's a pretty big indie fishing game one that we're going to get out in the next little while um and a bunch of retrospectives as well that i think it's probably about time we 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 got some announcements about um we're working on a lot of shit a lot of really cool stuff coming uh, in the next couple of weeks and the next uh, rest of the year patreon.com slash no clip if you'd like to support us and get random indica keys every now and again if you give us an absurd amount of money um and uh yeah thanks so much for for hanging out should we go record i think we're literally going to record the next best thing yes. right now right okay, same shirt let's go do that perfect same shirt love it hey i'm gonna wear the same shirt but i wear the same shirt every fucking day of the year so. uh, <laughs> just a closet right, full of black enough. shirts exactly you fucking you, you could yeah should we get my wife in here she can she can collect. if it's good enough for albert einstein corroborate he always wore the same yeah. outfit right so you're like you're like an I, einstein to me is how i say thank you a style icon <laughs> uh, albert einstein yeah right make me really feel, feel good about being <laughs> less than two years from 40. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Play some games.